So I was not going to do the hero review so soon into the Z690 season, but when I heard Asus was doing a recall for some serious hardware overheating, I've decided to quicken the pace. And obviously I will be addressing this uh, pressing issue in this review. Now, this said, let's go back to what really matters. The review of the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero, which remains the most awaited motherboard for hordes of enthusiast thirsty gamers every year. And the opportunity for Asus to shamelessly show off what it can do with a bunch of your money. So the Maximus is Asus more expensive, enthusiast friendly, wealthier family of Intel motherboards and the hero it's, well, very expensive entry level. I mean, it will cost you no less than 600 bucks before taxes to get one of those puppies. But thankfully, this year's hero comes with a bunch, a bunch of technology jump and, and really cool feature, which almost makes it worth it, almost. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a six layered ATX motherboard. Great and adequate to insulate PCIe signaling and therefore properly operate PCIe 5.0 enabled motherboard. But at this point, price range, I did expect eight PCB layers to further this board durability, and especially knowing that this Maximus Z690 Hero is a particularly bandwidth hungry motherboard. Design wise, this year's Hero is like nothing I have seen so far. Asus really worked on its bling. The jewel-like ROG logo placed on the heat shield looks absolutely great. But most noticeably, we got this gorgeous, beautiful LED screen covering the entirety of the back IO heat shield. Sharp and clear, it can produce several ROG-inspired animations, and for once, they are not too tacky. Overall, ROG managed to produce the most attractive hero I have seen so far, yet keeping it, it's a sturdy, heavy duty feel to it. So yeah, definitely a big aesthetic kudos to ROG for this. CPU socket wise, our Maximus Z690 Hero is powered by the brand new LGS 1700 CPU socket, supporting both 12th and 13th generation of Intel Core processors. That is 500 more pins than on its LGA1200 predecessors, explained by both a CPU core jump and the introduction of new bandwidth standards and requirements with the arrival of DDR5 memory and PCIe 5.0. But obviously it also does mean that this CPU socket is not backward compatible to previous generations of processors, which kind of suck. Talking of which, we have this brand new PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning that our Maximus Z690 Hero is juggling no less than three different uh, PCIe standards. First, we have the PCIe 3.0, which delivers one gigabyte per second per PCIe lane, PCIe 4.0, which doubles that, and now PCIe 5.0, which redoubled that to four gigabyte per second per PCIe lane. A lot of extra bandwidth yumminess, which for once, will actually translate into performance gain, as I will show later on on this review. Now, VRM-wise, the Maximus Hero kicks this Z690 season in all beauty. We've got 2190 amps power stages organized in a 20 plus one direct phases configuration. This is a total of 1890 amps, 1800 of which are CPU centric. Obviously totally unprecedented for a Hero motherboard and about for a 40% jump coming from its Z590 predecessor. And of course I'm tempted to say it is overkill, but to be absolutely honest, it is explained by the fact that the Alder Lake processors are much more powerful than their uh, uh, predecessor. And we're going from eight physical core to 20 physical core and a, a different kind of overclocking potential. So um, yeah, uh, it is a lot of power. It is a lot of amps, but in our case, it is put at good use. Now, close to 1900 amps is also an unprecedented amount of heat, but the Maximus Z690 Hero absolutely kills it when it comes to keeping things cool. I mean, first having that many power stages helps spread the load all around and avoid heat spots. But most importantly, we have a state-of-the-art two stages VRM blocks linked by a copper heat pipe, keeping an even heat spread on both blocks. The Eastern VRM block is not only the tallest I have seen, but it 
also features three protruding winglets, which discreetly and substantially increases its radiating surface. The main VRM block is no less impressive, featuring one of the largest metal IO radiating roof I have seen on a board. The result is a paradox, featuring both the most powerful VRM I have seen and the coolest one as well. With a severely overclocked i7 11700K, the VRM stayed below 45 degrees Celsius, which is, well, surprising. I will also note that thanks to its direct phases and therefore more agile power load, my 11700K managed to stay at 5.2 GHz without consuming beyond 240 watts worth of power, the hallmark of an incredibly well calibrated and efficient VRM, making this an absolute Ferrari of an over Clocker. In short, I am giving the ROG uh, a Maximus Z690 Hero an A plus in terms of VRM and recommend it for higher tier processors such as the i7 and i9K, where a 600 box motherboard should find itself anyways. RAM wise, our Maximus Z690 Hero can support up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM, clockable up to a novel and ludicrous 6.4GHz. And what you need to know here is that obviously DDR5 does bring some definite performance increase when compared to DDR4, both in terms of data swap and in clock. But where you will see the most of its benefits is in a, a memory intensive task such as content creation, not so much into gaming. Importantly, note that this board is not backward compatible to DDR4 RAM memory and won't even fit them. So don't try or you might damage something. And talking about damaging, uh, right around here, we got this memory module which have been placed backwards on a few Maximus Z690 heroes and therefore can cause shorts, burning smells or even smoke. Just to be safe when you receive it, just make sure that this chip has the number 150 facing this direction. If not, return the board immediately and ask for a swap or a refund. Now, storage wise, the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero supports three PCIe 4.0 M.2 solid state drives able to swap data up to 64 gigabit per second each. But what really puts aside the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero is the presence of its ROG Hyper M.2 solid state drive accessory, which can support two additional M.2 solid state drive at PCIe 5.0 support. That is the first time a motherboard manufacturer openly promises data swap up to whooping 128 gigabit per second per PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive, something which will undoubtedly please the content creation out there because this will impact their day-to-day -day computing. Now, obviously with such data swaps, you can expect quite a bit of heat out of our M.2 solid state drive, but fortunately Asus team went out of their way and equipped most of our sticks with premium, large, thick, double thermal padded heat sinks, which does a great job in keeping them away from thermal throttling thresholds. Finally, I'd like to note the presence of Asus' very own M.2 solid state drive locking mechanism it introduced last year on the Tough Z590 motherboard and will ease our everyday builder's life. Asus absolutely kills it here um, in proposing both a rich array of M.2 solid state drives, also some of the most performant ones on the market today, finally giving a raison de vivre. Uh, to the new PCIe 5.0 standard. Now, back IO wise, first let me note the presence of a permanent backplate, which was totally expected at that price range. And starting from the left, we have a clear CMOS and flash bias button for a CPU less bias update, an HDMI output for our integrated graphics, a couple of legacy second generation USB plugs, seven USB 3.2 plugs which data transfer going up to 10 gigabit per second, including a Type-C, and two Thunderbolt 4.0 Type-Cs with speeds going all the way up to 40 gigabit per second, which is a lot even for this kind of motherboard, bringing our back IO bandwidths, uh, well, USB bandwidth abilities to a whooping 150 gigabit per second. Just Crazy. Now, connectivity-wise, we get a 2.5 gigabit surge protected LAN, which is a little bit light when you look at a 600 box motherboard. I would uh, like, you know, I'm not saying I would want a 10 gigabit per second uh, 
uh, LAN plug on this, but a 5 would have been a perfect middle ground on there. And our dual band Wi-Fi 6E adapter, able to transmit on the cleaner 6 GHz radio spectrum. Now, audio-wise, we got the excellent and premium 8-channel ALC 4082 audio codec from Realtek, which is nothing short from pure bliss, both in terms of playback and recording. And for that, we need to thank our Nikikon capacitors, which provides 550 worth of homes to filter our Supreme FX chip. And the result is one of the purest playback sound you can hope from an integrated audio solution, which will satisfy the most demanding streamers out there. Overall, I'm giving Asus an A- minus grade on the back IO, since I'm now grading stuff, mainly because it shows a very high level of equipment, both in terms of bandwidth and audio. The only regret I have here is a somewhat lazy, uh, LAN, which should have been a bit more performant, in my opinion. Now, chipset-wise, because that's mostly why we are here. We got Intel's first PCIe 4.0 native-supported chipset. It has more bandwidth, more lanes, more USBs than its predecessor, but most noticeably, the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe 4.0 standard bandwidth level on a very cold 6 watts heat footprint, half of what AMD managed to do so far, and the reason why AMD had to equip most of its X570 motherboard with expensive and sometimes noisy chipset fans. In comparison, the Z690 heat shield can be all metal, completely silent, and usually smaller. Well, in our case, it didn't stop ASUS from going a bit overboard and produce a larger than life heat shield, which is more focused on its aesthetic. Uh, rather than radiating 6 watts worth of heat away, because half of that size would have been more than enough. But in short, what we need to retain here is that the Z690 chipset makes the PCIe 4.0 standard a more mature and affordable standard, and is now the reference standard for all Intel incoming boards, even on budget-friendly B-series. Now, expansion-wise, we got three PCIe 16 slots with different amounts of lanes. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes, therefore this is where you'd want your GPU for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Note that it runs at PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning that this slot alone can potentially deliver up to 64 gigabytes per second worth of bandwidth. Now, in a dual GPU configuration, the 16 lanes are split in a 8x8 configuration at PCIe 5.0 standard. So basically you can run you know, whatever video cards and whatever bandwidth levels they will have for many years. To come. So a great, great incentive for content creation which heavily rely uh, on video cards for their rendering. Finally, how not to talk about the Asus very own and very first PCIe opening mechanism that they so centrally called slot queue release. Simple, mechanical yet robust, a simple push will unlock your PCIe slot. One of many small yet highly functional uh, innovation only Asus seems to know how to deliver, which really uh, um, redefines uh, how easy it is to operate your motherboard on a day-to-day -day basis. If you add this Q whatever slot locking mechanism to the M.2 solid set drive unlocking mechanism, you know, those motherboards are getting really, really comfortable to use. Now, front panel connector wise, well, here nothing really new. We got our usual two USB second generation front panel connector, great for monitoring, two 90 degree angled 5 gigabit USB third generation front panel connectors and our 10 gigabit type C, all of which were fully expected at this price range. Now. Cooling-wise, we got a rather generous 8 PWM fan connectors, including two water pump connectors, thank you very much. Obviously more than enough to support the most ludicrous cooling uh, systems, including dual-loop custom water cooling solutions. Now, troubleshooting-wise, aside from the CMOS and BIOS flashback button we saw earlier on the back I.O., we also have our first aid easy debugger, here to signal the main stages of our boot, and our Q error screen to help us refine our troubleshooting experience. A very complete troubleshooting solution, which is necessary for such a complex motherboard. And also, I have to say, a certain level of, of comfort, which is expected at this price range. Now, BIOS-wise, we have the first real ROG refresh I have seen in a couple of years. The fonts are larger, menu is cleaner, and options more spaced. 
I like that. It is extremely stable as far as I can tell, very quick to respond and absolutely familiar to operate. Overclocking wise, being a Z690 chipset obviously means having full overclocking control, which by the way, you should be using instead of Asus own so-called AI overclocker, which will shamelessly overvolt your processor to indecent levels. Finally, and obviously, this would not be a ROG Maximus motherboard without an industrial amount of RGB. Starting with a gorgeous in-your-face large OLED screen displaying full screen animations on the back of your roof. And even though I'm not the biggest RGB fan in the world, I find it really good looking and, and yeah, I, I do kind of love it. And in addition, we have four RGB connectors, three of which are addressable. In short, enough RGB to tell the world how unique and special you are. Now, in conclusion, at about 600 bucks before taxes, the Rock Maximus Z690 Hero, well, <laughs> is not for everyone, especially considering the $100 premium you'll have to pay compared to its Z590 predecessor. And the whole question is, is it worth it? Well, in a weird way, yes. The very first thing you need to look at is what a wonderful VRM it runs. Not only is it insanely powerful, and good at overclocking the notoriously capricious Aldo Lake CPU architecture, but it does so with a very well calibrated wattage and a very cool heat footprint. This is really the heart of the matter on a Z690 motherboard, no matter which brand or what budget you're looking for. Equally importantly, it is also the very first motherboard I see which makes a valid argument for the PCIe 5.0 standard, showing off PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive and a dual PCIe 5.0 GPU support. And for the rest, well, it, it is as complete as it can be. In fact, it is so good that I'm tempted to say that this is the only Maximus Z690 powered Maximus worth buying because all of the other Maximus, which are more expensive, really won't bring anything worth, worth paying for. So it is good, but it could be a problem for Asus as well for the rest of the Maximus lineup, because its entry level is really where the ball should hand. So in short, and despite having to recall a few of those early motherboard, the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero is quite simply said, uh, the best Z690 motherboard on the market today. It is a heavyweight champion able to deliver comfort, performance, durability and looks all in one single package. Bit like a Frenchman.